Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. World of Warcraft is 17 years old as of today, so that means it's almost old enough to vote. But also that means a brand new anniversary event is upon us with a variety of different goodies to collect. In this video, I want to go over very quickly all the different things that are available with this event. All the different activities that are available, like a brand new world boss that's not super far from the Caverns of Time, as well as a brand new rewards like a new mount added for this world boss. All the other things that you can do, like Korax Revenge, the old school Ultrak Valor Returned, how does that hold out today and how do you go about farming the rewards from there? as well as brand new experience gain and my suggestions on what you can do with your old characters for this anniversary event to maximize the reward gain when you're trying to farm all of the different limited rewards. I'm gonna try to keep this video as brief as I can, but I do hope you guys find this video informative and helpful. The first thing you should do on any character that you log in for the anniversary is check your mailbox. This is where a gift box will be available for all of your characters for a limited time during this event. Inside of the box you will get an item that will allow your characters to gain experience boost, fireworks, to start a quest inside of the Caverns of Time, as well as some free Time War badges. It is then a good idea to head to your capital city and access the teleporters and head over into Tenaris, primarily the portal for Caverns of Time. Head to the bottom of Caverns of Time, way deep inside there will be Chromie, they will give out a couple of quests. Pick those quests up before you do anything this anniversary event because you'll also be able to turn those quests in for doing the anniversary activities for some Time War badges. Particularly useful if you're trying to save up on a couple of those before the Legion Time Walking event, which should be available very soon. The first thing you'll notice is the experience gain with the anniversary event. Since it is 17 years of World of Warcraft, that means everybody's going to get 70% more experience gain when completing quests or doing dungeons or simply killing mobs. And this experience gain is pretty ludicrous, as my character who has a lot of rested XP saved up and full heirloom gear was able to use this rested XP inside of one single dungeon at around level 22 or so, gained about two levels worth of experience. This is the perfect time to level a couple of characters. Whether you want to level some new characters as alts for Shadowlands with some of the new alt friendly stuff added in 915, or maybe you want to tackle your first Lightforge or Nightborn or Void Elf with some of the different 915 customizations they've recently gotten. Maybe you're just trying to get some heritage armor for some of the allied races you couldn't complete before. Now is the perfect time to do it because the experience gain is ridiculously good. You'll even be able to overlap this experience gain with the Pilgrim's Bounty Holiday, which is coming up very, very soon. And if you played in Battle for Azeroth and you have a couple of Warfront Commendations, which should be more far farmable in 915 actually, you should be able to buy some experience potions for 10% more experience on top of that. And all those things should be able to stack. So if you're trying to maximize the value of all these different holidays and experience boosts all at once, it might be a good idea to do all that stuff next week, or at least plan to do that next week in order to get some characters up and running for any reason whatsoever. Second, the new world boss is now available near Caverns of Time. It is a massive Fell Reaver, just like those in TBC, except this one actually drops some interesting loot. This world boss can drop the mount, which is Illidar Doomhawk, which right now does seem like a very low drop chance, maybe even as low as 1%, too early to tell. As well as a variety of different transmog pieces like Akama's Edge Axes, which are the axes that Akama wields in the Black Temple fight. There's also a toy called Doomwalker's Trophy Stand and a variety of different cloth, leather, shoulder, boots, pants, transmogs that you can collect when farming the boss. At a maximum level, level 60, the gear can be up to 226 item level. So if you're looking to catch up some of your alts, farming this world boss on a daily lockout might not be a bad idea. Then this boss does have his loot on a daily lockout. It is also confirmed that the rewards that you can get from the world boss can be acquired on characters that are level 30 or above. So if you have any obscure alls that you haven't played in a long while, maybe some characters stuffed over on some servers that you haven't visited in quite a bit of time, now might be a good idea to take a look at those characters and see if you might be able to at least park them near the caverns of time and try to do as many runs on those world bosses as you can until everything has been unlocked on all of your characters. Or at least that's exactly what I'll be doing on all of my alts. Parking them at the caverns of time, trying to see if I can get all the different rewards. The boss themselves doesn't really take too long to die. 
even level 30 characters seem to have some sort of scaling applied to them where even if you do low damage it does seem to be significant enough towards the boss and with so many people farming it it should be pretty easy to down but this isn't the only world boss available some of the other world bosses like lord kazak Azuragos and one of the four dragons of nightmare each day have something for you to collect so if you're looking for some extra 226 item level rewards or even extra time war badges all these bosses will be available on a daily rotation except you probably don't want to be like me looking for these groups at five in the morning also Korax revenge returns Korax revenge is a classic take at the original ultra valley and i do mean the original vanilla ultra valley the one that doesn't have any timers and there's no crazy weird matter where you rush to the boss it is literally the ultra valley that old school vanilla players have told you about where the games could go on for days if players wanted it's quite a unique bit of content because it doesn't technically have an end you can literally have fights down in the middle if you want to for hours I tried to play it a little bit on my paladin and we had a very very close back and forth between the horde and alliance with the horde earning that sweet victory at the very end although it was a very hard fought victory with a lot of losses at the beginning the alliance even went as far as summoning a massive tree elemental that started attacking and rampaging through the horde encampment we were able to pull it back further deep into our fortress and slay it and then started turning around that momentum back onto the alliance pushing them back all the way to van the general of the alliance it felt just as epic as some of those vanilla wow players that described their original av experience it was awesome there is a mount to get with Korax revenge and you definitely should do it on at least one character if you haven't unlocked it in previous Korax revenge that we had a couple of anniversaries ago if you are a low level player you technically can queue for this as you will be upscaled in this battleground just like the original Korax revenge this has scaling although the scaling with shadowlands compared to battle for azra's scaling is a little different back at bfa we were leveled all the way up to 120 and we get scaled down to level 60 while low level players got upscaled to level 60 which brought the gaps a little bit closer to one another but with this bg it looks like it is the best suited for max level 60 players but low level players are upscaled but not high enough Right now, doing this on a low level character, it seems like you have a third of everyone else's health and do a third of everyone else's damage, so it's a little bit of a weird experience. Blizzard is definitely going to have to take a few days to hopefully fix it, so then low level players can use Korax Revenge to gain a bit of XP and participate in the event, as it is supposed to be a scalable event, or they'll need to do scaling toned down for every other player that is at max level. Something needs to be done to kind of find balance in between. Finally, the vendor for the time walking events has a variety of goodies that are bought with time war badges. It's pretty straightforward. You can buy as many of them as you want to, as long as you have the currency. However, many players are saving their time war badges for Legion time walking. But majority of the little toys that you can get, some of the different costumes that you can put on your character or on other characters, those are actually Blizzard account bound. So you can go and buy them on your old characters, mail them over to your main character, and you can just put them in the bank to just keep them forever as a keepsake. So my best advice for this would be to do some of the different introductory quests for the anniversary event, like slaying the world boss outside of the caverns of time and using the resources on your alts, the time war badges on your alts to buy a lot of these goodies. They're not super expensive. And if you have a couple of alt characters, you should be able to get through them very, very quickly. So you can save majority of your time war badges on your main character from when Legion time walking comes around. Hopefully you guys have found this video helpful and useful when it comes to trying to farm up for all the different anniversary goodies. Best of luck farming that mount. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see all of you in another video.